Artemisia, the second of Caria, was born in the late 4th century BC into the Hecatomnid dynasty. According to tradition, she became the wife of her brother, Mausolus, and co-ruled the state with him. After his death, she inherited soul power and showed remarkable intelligence and devotion. Artemisia too entered history as the ruler who built one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. This grand monument was erected in honor of her late husband and brother, and it became a symbol of love and power. Her contemporaries admired her diplomatic skill and state wisdom. Even in harsh times, she remained a model of dignity. Her grief became the architecture of immortality. Amar Singh the first was born in the 16th century into the noble Sisodia dynasty as the son of the famous Maharena Pratap. His childhood was marked by military campaigns and fortified castles. From early on, he absorbed the spirit of resistance and independence, raised in the traditions of Muir heroism. After his father's death, Amar Singh inherited the throne of Muir and continued the fight against the Mughals but eventually made peace with Emperor Jahangir. This decision saved his kingdom from destruction, though it sparked debate. Some saw him as a traitor, others as a wise strategist. He is remembered as a ruler who preserved both honor and homeland. A concession is not always weakness if it comes from the strength of survival. Henrietta Wentworth was born in the 17th century into a noble English family, the only daughter of the fifth Baron Wentworth. Her childhood and youth unfolded in the calm world of aristocratic life. She became known early for her beauty and gentle nature until a sudden love changed her fate forever. Henrietta is remembered as the beloved of James Scott, Duke of Monmouth, the illegitimate son of King Charles II, and a claimant to the English throne. She followed him into exile, shared his poverty, and later stood by him during the ill-fated rebellion against James II. After the revolt failed, she died soon after, rumored to be from a broken heart. Her love for him was both her honor and her undoing. Frederick Henry was born in Delft as the youngest son of William the Silent and Louise de Coligny. His youth coincided with the turbulent years of the Eighty Years' War. From an early age, he stood at the heart of political events, destined for a role as a statesman. Frederick Henry succeeded his brother Maurice as Stadtholder and played a decisive role in strengthening the Dutch Republic. His diplomacy, military leadership, and patronage of architecture turned The Hague into a center of power and culture. He also sought religious reconciliation while maintaining firm political control. He was called the Fox of The Hague for his wit, patience, and skillful intrigue. Clelia was born in Genoa into an aristocratic family uniting the Grillo and Borromeo houses. Her childhood was filled with reading and scientific experiments, impressing tutors with her intellect. By adolescence, she had mastered several languages, including Latin and Greek, and excelled in mathematics. Clelia became a renowned patron, philosopher, and hostess of one of Milan's most enlightened salons. Her gatherings welcomed scientists, poets, and thinkers like Vico and Montesquieu. She defended women's right to education and supported progressive scientific ideas. The mind, if unused, rust she once wrote in a letter.
Wilhelm VI of Hesse Castle was born into the prominent house of Hesse. From childhood, he was immersed in courtly discipline and Lutheran teachings. After his father's death, he inherited the Landgraviate at the age of 16, under the regency of his mother, Emily Elizabeth. Throughout his short reign, Wilhelm VI worked to restore his lands after the devastation of the Thirty Years' War. He actively supported science and the arts, inviting renowned scholars and artists to Kassel. He paid special attention to the University of Marburg, dreaming of turning it into an intellectual hub. In politics, he remained cautious, avoiding conflicts and strengthening internal stability. The success of a ruler lies in being remembered with respect, not with regret. Isabella I of Castile was born into the royal family of Trastmara. She spent her early years in relative obscurity, far from the political center. After her brother's death and a contested succession, she was proclaimed heir to the throne and married Ferdinand of Aragon, shaping the future of Spain. As queen, Isabella carried out sweeping reforms, strengthened royal authority, and restructured the judicial system. She ended lawlessness and supported the Reconquista, returning Granada to Christian rule. Her support of Columbus changed world history. The discovery of the New World was her visionary achievement. Yet, her reign was also marked by harsh religious policies, the expulsion of Jews and the establishment of the Inquisition. She saw herself as God's chosen and acted with unwavering conviction. Daniel Defoe was born in London to a family of dissenters. He received a solid education and initially pursued a career in commerce. After several financial failures, he turned to writing and became known for his sharp political pamphlets and later for creating the English novel. Daniel Defoe made history as the author of Robinson Crusoe, but his pen touched every genre from satire to economic treatises. He wrote under dozens of pseudonyms and was imprisoned multiple times for his views. Living a turbulent life, he remained a restless observer until his final days. Human folly is inexhaustible and so is the inspiration it provides. <laughs>